Hey, thanks for uh, tuning in. This is a quick video to introduce you to the EEPROM emulator project um, and uh, give you a bit of a quick start guide um, for uh, users trying, trying to use this device on Windows 10. The EEPROM emulator project uh, is something that I published a couple of months ago on my website, uh, mygeekyhobby.com. Um, it's currently pinned as a featured uh, article, but it's filed under Electronics uh, EEPROM Emulator. Um, so first of all, you know, what is uh, EEPROM Emulator? Um, you know, it's an it's a electronic device um, that is supposed to be used to replace or temporarily replace um, EEPROM, um, a, an EEPROM chip. So those EEPROM chips were commonly used in the platforms of the 80s and um, they provided program storage. Uh, whenever you do development uh, for those platforms, um, you sort of need something to update those EEPROMs. Um, I'm showing here an example of a device that uses an EEPROM. In this case, um, it's a cartridge for Commodore 64, um, a standard 8K cartridge for a Commodore 64. Um, and you know, imagine a situation you're experimenting, you're trying different images, you're trying to use, uh, load different uh, types of games and um, experiment with this cartridge. Um, you know, it's a simple example, but, um, you know, typically this pro this, um, the workflow would look um, as follows. You know, you, you, um, you find a, an image file that you want to use. You then take this cartridge, you remove this uh, EEPROM um, out of the cartridge, you put it into your EEPROM eraser. Uh, once it's erased, um, you put it into the programmer, um, into the EEPROM programmer, uh, load up the image file, then install the EEPROM back into this cartridge, and then you can test. You know, the whole process takes 10, 10 or 15 minutes. You know, it's, it's time consuming. Um, you know, it works equally bad for uh, firmware development. You know, if you're running, writing, writing a program for maybe a small um, single board computer that uses um, a Z80 or 6502 CPU and uh, EEPROM as a as a program memory. Every time you want to do a change, you know it, you have to go through this lengthy process. So to to help you with this, you know this is where EEPROM emulator comes in handy. Um, the EEPROM emulator is um, is a device. I mean, this specific one is based on uh, Arduino Nano um, or to be more more precise it's based on an arduino nano clone um, so on one hand it will have um, this um, flat cable and it with um, uh, like a 28 pin um, emulator head uh, which is um, something that you can um, install uh, um, in place of the of the chip of the eprom chip on the other end there's a USB connection towards a computer. So you can upload different versions of the hex files, uh, different hex files with different versions of your code uh, into, the, uh, into the emulator. Uh, the, the Arduino Nano will load up that hex file into, your, into the SRAMs here. There are two SRAMs, two 32K bit uh, SRAMs um, on the emulator. And then it will flip into this emulation mode where it will, um, uh, over those connections, it will pretend to be the EEPROM. Um, two additional cables are, or two additional connections are provided uh, for reset lines. Um, there's an active low and an active um, high uh, reset that you can hook into the target processor um, to keep it in reset state whilst you're uploading or whilst you're updating, um, updating the code. Um, so I have one of those devices here on my desk. Um, this is one of the sort of more recent um, versions of my PCB. Um, as you can see, you know, um, Arduino Nano on board. Um, there's a small additional um, piece of non-volatile memory, um, an SPI EEPROM, a 64K SPI EEPROM. I'll explain in a moment what is it for. Um, but then there's just two standard SRAMs, um, 62256 um, SRAMs. Um, that will form the 64K uh, memory um, uh, for, for the targets, anything from 2716 to 2732. Um, sorry, 2716 to 27512. So that's um, 
Um, that's the device. Uh, like I said, um, it has this flat cable and the probe at the end of the of the cable. Um, it's a 28 pin probe. Um, um, I'd mentioned 2716 and 2732. Keep in mind that those smaller EPROMs, the 2716 and 2732, they're only 24 pin devices. Um, so for those, you'll have to, you know, either create yourself a small adapter or what I do is um, install this probe um, in the 24 pin socket, um, but leave the, the top two pins on both ends uh, unplugged. So just plug the sort of bottom 24, uh, bottom 24 pins. Um, you know, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that pin 28 normally on a, on a 28 um, pin um, EEPROM, uh, this pin 28 supplies power. Um, so the emulator itself can be powered either from the target uh, over, the, over the flat cable or can be powered through the USB connection. Um, if you plug this 28 pin head into the 24 pin socket over let's say 2732, um, power is not going to be provided, so you have to either improvise, somehow get the power into this um, into this um, pin separately, uh, or, or leave uh, computer plugged in uh, to the Arduino or, or, or just a five volt uh, USB cable, uh, like a charger, um, to keep the the device plugged into power. Um, so that's um, that's the emulator. Uh, connection to the computer on the other end, um, a couple of um, LEDs and a, and a button. Um, so there's a red LED that is described or is marked here run and there's a power LED that just indicates the power to the system um, and this this push button um, allows you to uh, invoke loading of, um, of an image from the SPIE prom into the SRAM and starting the emulation. Um, so imagine, you know, um, you are um, well. To, so, so ultimately, this emulator is is um, designed to to kind of work in two two different modes. One mode is when you're doing a firmware development. You're constantly changing. You know, you you're compiling the new version of code every you know couple of minutes and constantly uploading and changing. Um, in this mode, there's no point to write into the SPIE from because you're changing it every revision. So. It's just better to um, to just upload the, the image straight to the SRAM and test your new version. But for situations where you want to permanently save the image into the device, um, you can use this option to save into the SPIE prom. Um, this is uh, useful, especially for things like you know this example that I was showing earlier on, the cartridge for the Commodore 64. You know, maybe when you're doing various testing, you, you, you are plugged into a computer, but later on um, the emulator is not plugged into the computer, but you still want to be able to sort of um, start, up, um, start up the target uh, with the emulator and its content, um, you know, um, up and running. Um, so the problem is that the SRAMs will lose, I mean, they will lose the content when you switch the power off. So. What we want to be able to do is after power up, we want to be able to load whatever we saved in the SPIE prom into the SRAM and start the emulation. So that's what this load button allows you to do. Uh, there's also an option to sort of automatically perform this loading. So when you power up the, the emulator, um, it can automatically just um, load, um, load the, the, um, the content in uh, without you having to press the button. So um, to get things up and running, uh, with your emulator, uh, you're gonna need a couple of things. So first of all, you're gonna need Python. So let me just um, show you very quickly uh, what do we need. So on Windows, um, Windows 10, if you just start um, command line and uh, type in Python, um, in my computer, of course, I have Python already installed and we really want Python 3.8. So I have 3.8 installed, but if you don't have Python installed on your computer and you type in Python, uh, Windows 10 will automatically take you to Microsoft Store and it will give you an option to install um, Python 3.8. Just follow the defaults, just um, follow the default um, settings from, from the Microsoft Store and you will end up with Python installed. Um, exit. 
On top of that, you need uh, two libraries. So libraries in Python, um, easiest way to install is to use pip. So pip install pyserial. So this is to, pro to uh, give uh, Python ability to communicate over the serial port. Um, in my case, of course, this is already installed, so there's nothing to do. Uh, and the other library you need is py simple GUI. Um, so that, um, that allows you to uh, create a small Windows-like applications using Python. So uh, again, in my computer it's already installed, so I don't need, um, I don't need that. Um, so with that, we're sort of ready to go. Of course, you're going to have to plug the device into the, you know, you're going to have to plug the emulator into the computer. And for that, you will probably need drivers. Um, so let me just show you what I mean. So the emulator is based on Arduino Nano. Uh, I mean, those days, if you buy Arduino Nano, it's likely to be a clone um, with, a, with, um, with a CH340. Uh, serial uh, USB to serial converter on board. Um, I've just tested it on a, on a blank installation of Windows 10, and um, you know Windows 10 will install the drivers for you automatically. So when you plug the emulator in, when you plug the emulator in, if we watch the uh, if we watch the uh, the computer, um, the, uh, in this case, if we watch the device manager, you will see that we have a new serial port, USB uh, COM4. So that uh, serial port is pretty much the Arduino, uh, the Arduino Nano. Um, and that's, um, that's, uh, that's the emulator. So with those three things um, in place, so the emulator plugged in, um, the Python installed, and the libraries installed, all we need now is the and the program that actually does the, um, the, the management or the program that controls the emulator. You can download it from GitHub, um, from my repository, uh, EPROM, uh, EPROM uh, EMUNG, um, under the software section. There's two Python scripts. Actually, the, the beta one is, is sort of already tested, ready to go. Um, the, the first program only allows you, or the first script, the, the, the one that I, I'm just showing you here, only allows you to provide all the parameters uh, using CLI. Um, that's fine for most use cases where you are integrating the emulator with your tool chain. Um, you know, after editing the, the code in C or assembly, you run the um, compiler and then you run, uh, after the compiler is done and you've got the hex file, you can automatically, through a script, initiate the upload to the em emulator automatically. Um, but uh, quite a few users didn't want it to play with the CLI, so uh, one of the users um, wrote a small overlay that, that is now integrated into the script. Um, so if you don't use command line, if you don't provide any parameters, it will start the script in a, in, in a, you know, a sort of a GUI mode. So you download those, um, those Python files. I mean, you can download the whole repository, but um, if you download uh, one of those files, just go for uh, row. Um, download this file. That's the script that does the emulation. Um, so in my case, it's sitting here. So that's the that's the script that I have. So if I start the script, it comes up like this. So that's the that's the GUI part I was telling you about. So you have a couple of options here, uh, and let me actually show you the device at the same time. So first of all, you choose the size of the of the EEPROM or the type of EEPROM you're going to be emulating. Uh, two seven, let's choose two seven six four. Let's not choose any of those other options for now. Um, select the COM port. So my emulator is on COM four, and we choose the um, the hex file. So the hex file has got the code. You know, the hex file has got the content of your um, EEPROM that you want to that you want the, the EEPROM emulator to to pretend. Um, so with those, you submit, and as you can see, um, we are uh, uploading the, the hex file into the emulator. If you don't select any of the additional options, like I said, the only thing that's going to happen is over the USB link, um, uh, you will see um, 
uh, over the USB link will send the hex file into the SRAM and start the emulation. You see this uh, run LED is now lit up um, and the emulator is ready to go and it's doing its job. Now the only problem is that if I remove power um, and plug the, plug, plug the power back in, um, right now the contents of the SRAM is random, it's, it's empty. Um, you know, it's not going to do whatever you need it to do. It's not a problem, like I said, if you're doing it constantly as part of firmware development, you just um, send in the new version of the code and, and, and you're happy. But if you want the emulator to remember what was the previously uploaded file, you have to um, select some of those advanced options. So let me show you again. We go back to the GUI. So let's choose first uh, the type of memory, COM port, and this time we're going to say save to SPI. Okay, so not only the, the, the control script is going to save, it's going to upload the, the hex file into the uh, SRAM, um, it will also load it to the SPI EEPROM. So this SPI EEPROM, um, the content is preserved during a power down. Um, so, you know, you can see we're now emulating, we're ready to go, everything is up and running. Um, again, imagine the situation where you're taking this emulator uh, to your target device. Um, you plug it in over this um, um, flat cable uh, and the device powers up. Um, I will power, power it up with the USB cable, but let's imagine that it's, it's powering up. Um, so at this point of time, the SRAM is empty, but you have the image in the um, SPI EEPROM. So you can press the load button and it will copy the content of the SPI EEPROM into the SRAM and start the emulation. Um, and you're ready to go. Um, if you were using the, the reset hooks during the um, during the, the transfer of the of the content of the SPI EEPROM into the SRAM, the a run LED flashes rapidly to tell you that, uh, hey, I'm copying the data right now, and it's holding the CPU in a reset state. Uh, when it's done, it will reset, it will, it will release the reset, and it's ready to go. The, your CPU is going to start with the, with the new version of code. Um, there's another, another thing you can do. So if I remove the power once again um, and plug it back in, actually, I didn't have to remove the power, but let me just restart my script. So we go back in here. So the other thing you can do is, uh, like before, select the type of memory, select the, the, the e-prompt, uh, the COM port. Um, you want to save to SPI and auto start. Um, so what it will do, it will automatically, uh, it will automatically upload or up automatically copy the content of the uh, SPI e-prompt into the SRAM and start the emulation after power on. So let's do that and we'll submit the um, the command so that's done so we're running in emulation mode right now so we're emulating uh, we're emulating the the EEPROM um, but let's say we remove power and our target now starts powers up you know our computer powers up so I'll plug the cable back in um, and what will happen is when the uh, Nano actually um, starts up, it will automatically load, as you can see, it was flashing very rapidly. It will automatically load the contents of the SPIE prom into the SRAM and start the emulation. So it kind of allows you to run the emulator independently without the USB connection, without the, the, the computer connection. It can, um, it can start your target um, sort of independently. Um, and that's really the, um, you know, that's really the, the most important part about the whole project. Um, like I said, it's open source, you can build it yourself. Um, I've published uh, links to uh, jail, uh, to PCBWay uh, ordering form um, on my website. You can order PCBs. Um, if you can't be bothered to order everything individually, uh, the parts and everything, you can buy kits or, or ready-made devices um, through an through a, uh, eBay store or a Tindy store uh, that I have. Um, that's about it. Thanks for thanks for listening. Hope this um, you know will come handy.